Greetings, my name is Drew, and you are you, and here we are at the Goulet Pen Company today, and I'm going to talk about the new Season 7 set of inks from Colorverse, and these are really cool. All of them are inspired by the Hubble Space Telescope and all of the wonderful, beautiful, and lovely pictures it has taken over its history of doing hubbly things, and we're going to take a look at the inks. I'm going to swab them up for you and maybe talk a little bit of all the things I looked up on Wikipedia about what these mean. So <laughs> it's not a science lesson, but uh, I learned some things and maybe you will too. So let's get into it. All right. So first things first, we are going to unbox one of these. I have here Extreme Deep Field and the Companion Ink NGC 1850. So I chose this one because as you'll notice right when I open it, I mean, of course, Colorverse is doing the whole Colorverse thing with this packaging. It's always fun. But one reason I love this one is because the theme, Eye on the Universe, all about Hubble, this is the Extreme Deep Field image. Because I know it. This is one of the few things I actually knew about before I started researching some of these. That's the image. You can totally lose yourself in that. So there we have it. Um, it describes a little bit about why they are being inspired by, what they're being inspired by here. And we'll see this theme throughout. Also here, we've got a fun pack of goodies. I see already some things that Colorverse always does, but then some things that they don't always do. So, okay, so we've got the Colorverse napkin, AKA blotting paper, AKA whatever you need it for. And then, okay, we've got, what is this? Oh, this is a pen stand. Look at that. So I guess you, oh my God, there it goes. <laughs> <laughs> I wasn't ready for that. Okay, so you pop out a little hole here, and I guess you loop it. Uh, anyway, you, and then do one of these things, and that's, 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 okay. Retro, pin, there we go, it's a, it's a pen stand. And this, I'm guessing, is a bookmark. It looks like a bookmark to me. It needs to be popped out a little bit, too. There we go, it's now a bookmark. And it's got the pillars of creation up top here, and then some deep field action going on here on the back. I like that, that's fun. And then we have some stickers of all of the inks in the set. The fun continues with the actual inks themselves. So each ink is held in place by one of these cardboard cards and securely packed in here with foam cut to each individual bottle. So you've got the primary bottle, and then the secondary bottle. So Colorverse sometimes does this. They sometimes go with the single bottle, but the Eye on the Universe Season 7 set is going to be the double bottle situation. So starting off here, we've got Extreme Deep Field and NGC 1850. Extreme Deep Field is one of the most famous images that the Hubble has taken. This image will melt your brain, okay? It has 5,500 approximately, 5,500 galaxies in it. If you want to feel completely insignificant, or you know what, let's spin it. If you're in the mood for just crippling humility or uh, extreme joy in your life and being a part of this universe, Extreme Deep Field is the image for you, my friend. As far as the ink goes, <laughs> it's a beautiful ink. It is a gorgeous, gorgeous ink with a nice sheen. It's a dark, dark, blurply navy, but with a nice hint of sheen, a, a reddish sheen. There's that. And NGC 720 is a glistening ink. And this stuff settles quickly. I mean, just like with most shimmering ink, you really need to keep your pen consistently moving around if you want to be able to get the properties showing up on this one. This is a, a star cluster in the Dorado constellation and it is located in the Large Magell Magellanic Cloud. Maybe named after Magellan, I don't know, you tell me. I had to look that one up. But I did know, I mean, I did learn that the Large Magellanic Cloud is a satellite galaxy of the Milky Way, like our Milky Way. There's a galaxy orbiting the Milky Way, which surprised me, but then it also didn't because that's, that's what you do in space, right? You orbit things. But that's what's fun about these inks. Colorverse does not arbitrarily name anything. They think about it. All right, so let's get into perhaps the most famous image that the Hubble Space Telescope has ever taken. 
and this is the Pillars of Creation. Even if you're not really familiar with what it is, you've probably seen it. The ink itself is a really, really nice ink. It's got a lot of good shading to it, so hopefully we'll be able to capture it here. You know what, I should have led with this. Over here I have some Tomoe River in 52 gram, and over here I have some Rhodia 80 gram paper, obviously both in A4 size. So moving on to uh, Mystic Mountain here, this is another glistening ink, and this is the companion to the Pillars of Creation. And I was familiar with the Pillars of Creation. I had on my desktop wallpaper for a while, and I knew it was beautiful. However, it wasn't until I started doing some research here that I saw the Mystic Mountain photograph, and oh my god, is it beautiful. It might be better looking than the Pillars. I think it is, actually. The inks themselves, um, the Pillars of Creation has a deep purple look to it with some greenish gold sheen. So this is one of the heavier sheeners of the collection. Mystic Mountain has a dusky blue look to it, as you can see here. It looks almost a little watery, but I don't know. It works with the uh, photograph that I think it's inspired by, so I like it. It's a grayish blue. Nothing too vibrant, nothing too deep, but a very easy blue. All right, you know what? Let's talk about the big kahuna, the hubs the big homie Hubble himself. And th it actually does uh, feature Edwin Hubble, whom the telescope was named after. So this thing got launched in 1990, and it just celebrated its 30th anniversary in operation last year in 2020. So it is still going strong. It can continue to go strong. It, they're saying that it'll still do its thing uh, for good years to come. However, they are going to be launching the James Webb Space Telescope this year, I'm thinking this fall is what they said. So it'll it'll uh, it'll have a friend. So yay! I'm joined by James, old Eddie and Jimmy. I'm gonna be quiet now. Anyway, the Hubble ink is a nice one. It is a light red, not really a pink, but also not really a red. But it does have a nice gold sheen to it. So it's quite beautiful, deserving of the man himself. And then it also has the HST companion ink and HST means Hubble Space Telescope. I didn't know that. I was like, oh, what's HST? It's got a picture of something on here. It's a picture of the telescope, Drew. So I kind of felt like a dummy about that one, but hey, it's a nice ink. It is a pale ish emerald with a little bit of gray in it. I think it's delightful. So you can go with Hubble or HST. Moving on to Hippo camp. Now, many of you are probably thinking, well, do hippos even need tents? Do they need a crackling fireplace with hot dogs and schmores? No, they don't. They don't camp. This is different. This is a moon. This is a moon. And this is a moon around Neptune. Neptune moon. And hippo camp, the moon, was so dim, is the right word, that when... Carl Sagan's Voyager 2 spacecraft launched and passed right by it years ago. It didn't see it. It wasn't until the big hubs, hubby hub hub, took a gander at it and said, hey, hey there's a moon there. So yay for hubs. And there's that. Hippocamp is more of a true blue than we saw in Mystic Mountain. It does create a darker blue halo around it, depending on what sort of paper you're using. Along with Hippocamp, we get Comet SL9. And Comet SL9 was a comet that in 1994 broke apart. Well, it didn't break apart in 94. It broke apart anyway. Prior to 1994, it broke apart. In 1994, however, it smashed into Jupiter. And that was cool because we got to watch it. And there was never before an opportunity for us to actually watch an interstellar collision happen. And next we are going to move on to Crab Nebula. And when it was discovered, not by the Hubble, because 1840, it looked like a crab. However, later on, the Hubs took a look at it and not so much crab looking, but we won't hold that against it. It's still very, very pretty. And the ink is no exception. The ink is also very, very pretty. It is a beautiful dark emerald with a little bit of sheen on Tomoe River anyway. Now, while the Crab Nebula might not look exactly like a crab, Horsehead 
looks like a horse head. So the Horsehead Nebula is the companion ink to the Crab Nebula, the smaller of the two, and the more glistening of the two. So this is another one of those shimmery, glistening inks, and it is a beautiful magenta purple. I just wrote horse hay, horse head. There we go, and then a little squiggle. Horse hay, we don't want that. All right, and finally, we're going to wrap things up with the last set in the collection, SM1, and that stands for Service Mission 1. So that was the first maintenance mission for the Hubble Space Telescope. They needed to fix the mirrors because the mirrors from in the beginning were not ideally positioned. They were warped in a way that they could have been better. So they made them better by adding more mirrors to correct the displacement so that's what SM1 did. It's good. Now the SM1 ink is a beautiful dark, dark blue, eh, I would call it a navy, with a bright sheen. Now the companion ink to SM1 is called CoStar, and that stands for Creative Optic Space Telescope Axial Replacement. CoStar. CoStar is a uh, just a gray, just a nice gray, nice space gray, maybe a moon dusty gray. We'll call it that. And that's that. Now that everything has started to dry, you're going to notice the shimmering, or sorry, the glistening inks popping out a little bit. So as far as that goes, we've got Horseshoe Nebula here toward the bottom. We've got NGC 1850 and Mystic Mountain. So those are the three glistenings that you'll get. You get your primaries over here on your left, and then the smaller ink bottles here on your right. Thank you so much for sticking with me through all this. This was my first time doing a more ink-centric video, so I'm sure there's some things I could do better for you. Just let me know, and I will do my best. Until then, if you'd like to learn more, you can go to our website, goulaypens.com, check out all the information we have on these inks and more. You can use the swab shop to compare some of these with perhaps inks you're more familiar with. You can get a good idea of what is going to work for you before you buy. Until then, right on.